Had myself a nice little visit paid by our good old friend, Mr. Omicron. Cheers. The show must go on. In better news, how about, uh, how about we talk about this? I gotta say, this has without a doubt been the most requested rig breakdown I've ever got. I did my favorite gear from 2021 and showed a couple little glimpses of this A7S III rigged out and uh, yeah, turns out you guys really wanted to see it. So what we're gonna do in this video is build this thing completely up from scratch, talk through all of the parts that I chose, the reasons why I chose them, the variations of different parts that I'll use for certain types of shoots. Before we jump into building this thing from the ground up, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about my history with this camera and kind of Sony's in general. I've been a longtime fan and supporter of everything that Sony has put out. I think they've honestly been one of the best in the game when it comes to value and versatility with their cameras that they've released over the last five years or so. As you guys know, I've had quite a few of their bodies at this point. I've shot all kinds of work all over the world with these things, and I've always been very, very impressed with what I've been able to create with them. But this camera, the Sony a7S III, truly is, I think, my favorite video camera I've ever used. This thing just doesn't disappoint in any regard. And so, of course, I have a super rigged out setup here that I've been loving using for a lot of different stuff. So let's break it down. Okay, so first things first, anytime I'm building camera rigs, I really love using this little tool from Small Rig. has everything you need. The cage is something that a lot of people were asking questions about. This is the Condor Blue Sony a7S III cage. Just an amazingly functional, well-built cage. has a built-in Arca-Swiss quick-release plate, so it makes it really quick and easy to mount your camera in the cage. You don't have to unscrew something from the bottom of the cage. But there are these small little locking hex screws that go into the neck strap eyelets. It creates a really secure fit and mount on the whole cage itself. Allen key magnet to the bottom, really nice. Let's go ahead and throw on an Arca Swiss quick release plate on the bottom of the cage. I'll show you why here in just a little bit. Go ahead and talk about this base plate. This is from Nicey Rig. And why I chose this, I use a couple of different cinema cameras, and so I wanted a base plate that would really function well with all of the cameras and add some weight and mass to everything. This also has two airy rosettes on both sides, which makes mounting different accessories like side handles really nice. We're gonna go ahead and throw on a small rig Arca Swiss dovetail plate. That's why we put the quick release plate on the bottom of the cage. This is going to make mounting the camera and you know setting it up, breaking it down much quicker and more efficient when we're traveling with the gear or we need to strip it down to be a little bit more compact. Go ahead and grab some 15 millimeter rails. These are, uh, I believe 12 inch rails. I have a few different sizes, but for this particular setup we're building, 12 inch is just about the right length. Camera just clamps in super quick and easy. For the top handle, this is also from Condor Blue. This is a really, really clean top handle, mounts via NATO rail on the top. It has a start and stop record button that can be plugged into the USB port of the a7S III. I don't use it all that often, but definitely a cool feature. We're gonna throw on another big Arca Swiss quick release plate to the bottom of the base plate. One thing I forgot to mention is this Peak Designs side hand strap. What I did to make this work with this cage setup is by adding a small tripod screw, which is a quarter 20 thread that has one of those little wing uh, loops that you can kind of twist and tighten with your fingers. This makes it so I can thread the Peak Design strap through it, mounting it to the top of the cage and to mount it on the bottom of the cage, the little loop, I decided to wrap it around the lever for the quick release on the cage itself. What this gives us is a super nice side grip for shooting handheld with this whole setup. It really is surprising how much this adds stability to the entire thing. Next, we're gonna add a small cold shoe extender. This is from Small Rig. And the reason I do this is because I need to mount a microphone on here. With this setup, there really isn't an available cold shoe to mount a microphone um, that's not in the way of anything. And so 
mounting this to the top of the Condor Blue cage kind of offsets a position that we can mount a small microphone for on-camera audio. The microphone itself. The one I've been using for this setup, just because it's so small and so light, and honestly I'm really impressed with the audio quality, is the Deity D4 Duo. This one is cool because it does have two microphones, both front and rear. I really only use the front microphone, but it's just a really compact, great little option. For powering this whole rig, we're using a V-mount battery plate from Came TV. This is a really small one, and I like this one because it has two DTAP outputs, and it's the perfect size with the Came TV mini V-mount batteries that I love and rave about. Amazing, compact, super functional little batteries. So in order to mount the monitor to the top handle, I actually use this little rotating mount from Nizi. On it, I have a Condor Blue mini quick release plate. These things are amazing and you guys will see why here in a moment, but this bolts straight to the front of the top handle. It's super secure. I really like the way this setup works because it doesn't add a ton of unnecessary height to the rig itself. The monitor I'm using is the small HD ND7 and honestly I kind of wish I talked about this in my favorite gear from 2021. I wish I would have bought a 7 inch monitor sooner, a really high quality one like this with a full aluminum body, an amazing user interface, great brightness, SDI. It's just a solid monitor and really it's worth it in the long run. Monitor just pops on and off, super seamless, super satisfying. It makes setting up and breaking down super efficient. Love these Condor blue plates. Definitely pick some of these guys up if you don't have any. So lately I've been using these DZO cinema lenses. Amazing full frame cinema primes. They sent me out a set of them and I will be doing a review on these very, very soon. So stay on the lookout for that. Of course, because these are manual focus lenses. We need some sort of a focusing system. I personally really like using the Tilta Nucleus Nano. Next, we're going to go ahead and add the small rig lens support. I think some people will think these are a little unnecessary and I can agree, but especially when you get some heavier lenses on the front of your rig, you'd be surprised how much everything will kind of lean forward. It keeps the rig a whole lot more solid. Because we're using the Nucleus Nano, we can use the side focusing handle from Tilta. I have the Airy Rosette adapter on this, and so I can just go ahead and mount this straight to the side of the rig and give ourselves a really, really nice side support handle and also, of course, being able to control manual focus. This makes for a really, really awesome handheld shooting setup. The handle can be articulated too if you need to get a little bit of a lower or higher angle that's more comfortable for your wrist. I route the cable underneath and kind of against the rails, of course, using these little Velcro ties that I've showed you guys before to kind of clean and tidy everything up, make sure there's no loose cables around. Let's go ahead and connect the HDMI and power to the camera. I like using this right angle HDMI cable that I found from Caleb Pike, DSLR video shooter, as many of you guys know him. This is a really awesome cable. It's just the right length and it's a uh, super low profile right angle, so it's perfectly out of the way. We'll go ahead and connect the power cable to the small HD. This is basically just a DC to DTAP cable locks into the monitor and then I can route the cable kind of around the cage, kind of hide the wires and plug it into the DTAP out on the battery plate. Next, I'll go ahead and add a USB-C to USB type A. And I recently just found this amazing little right angle USB-C adapter. It routes that USB-C cable straight down, completely out of the way. It makes rotating the screen in this setup a lot easier. You don't have to avoid a cable sticking out of the side of the camera. This basically just keeps the camera powered. The USB out of the little Kame TV battery is enough to basically keep this thing alive and not drain any battery while shooting. It's honestly a perfect setup. Don't have to do a dummy battery. We'll just go ahead and pop in the NPF battery for the side focusing handle and boom, here we go. Follow focus, ready to go. I love the side focusing handle system for pulling focus when using manual lenses. Real quick, before we continue with this build, I want to tell you guys a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, which is ArtGrid. If you haven't heard of it before, ArtGrid is an incredible library of beautifully shot stock footage from filmmakers all over the world. But what sets ArtGrid apart in my mind is the quality of content that is on there. We've all heard of stock footage before, oftentimes it seems very 
generic. It seems very easy to tell that it was stock footage. But here on Artgrid, you have a massive selection of footage that looks truly professional, like really cinematic. They offer a super simple license that covers usage for your own personal work, but also your client's work. Maybe there's a shot that you missed while you were out on location, or your client asks for a drone shot that you have no ability to go out and shoot. Artgrid has you covered. You choose your subscription plan based off of what quality of footage you want to be able to use. For $25 a month, you can download their entire library in HD. For $40 a month, you can get everything in 4K and 8K. And for $50 a month, you can download all of the footage in log or even sometimes raw. In my mind, the world of filmmaking today, the types of content we're creating, this is a no-brainer. Being able to access this high quality of footage that's usable anywhere and in those raw and log formats. So you can seamlessly add this footage into your projects or your clients' projects. So if you wanna try it out and use some of the footage for yourself, there's a link down below in the description where you can sign up and get an additional two months completely free. Thank you, Artgrid, for sponsoring today's video. Next, let's go ahead and add the small rig mini map box. I get it. I think a lot of people are like, you don't need a map box, especially with a, a mirrorless camera, but they really do serve a purpose. And also I get the argument of like, if you're not using rectangular filters, then why would you use a matte box? Well, this one happens to work really well with circular filters. My Freewell magnetic system works flawlessly, and uh, honestly, it's just convenient. It cuts out flares, it's lightweight, of course, makes the camera look a little bit bigger, a little more professional, which is a good thing. There's no shame in that. So this is like my full rigged out production setup with manual lenses, but of course, the Sony has amazing autofocus, and so let's go ahead and show you what my autofocus setup looks like. It's a little stripped down, still rocking the Tamron 28 to 75, such an amazing lens. Because we're not using the side focusing handle from Tilta, I can swap this out for something a little bit more functional. I like using this side rubber handle that mounts via NATO rail, and I can mount it straight to the top of the Condor Blue cage. But then what I do is I put a low profile NATO rail on top of the handle so I can then mount a top handle to it. I know that sounds confusing, a whole lot of NATO rail stuff going on here, but basically they all kind of mount onto each other and it creates this super awesome kind of lightweight rubber side grip setup. It's, it's, I don't know, I love these rubber grips. It makes for a really, really secure feel when running around with camera. This is the setup I love using for event work. Then what's really cool is because we have that Arca Swiss dovetail plate to mount the camera to the base plate is I can just really quickly detach a few cables, strip this down and have a super compact, but still very functional little handheld rig. This is much more low profile. So if I need to get in tight in weird spaces or I just don't wanna have a rig that draws a ton of attention, this is the setup. Okay, so that's basically it. These are all of the variations more or less of this A7S III rig that I've been using and I've kind of built up over time for different shooting scenarios. How I'm able to go really sort of lightweight and minimal, but when I want to add some weight to the whole package, make it more stable, make it more functional for real handheld shooting, really trying to get the smoothest shots, you know, I can stick on all of the heavier pieces, you know, put on the base plate with battery power, throw on the monitor, throw on some cinema lenses, and really kind of take this whole thing to the next level. Of course, everything that I talked about here will be linked down below for you guys to check out if any of it seems interesting to you, if you wanna pick up any of the parts to add to your rig. Hopefully this kind of gives you guys some ideas, kind of maybe inspires you on how you can improve or build your own. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you wanna see more camera rig breakdown videos. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.